One of our guests of the day, the other one today, is a man you may recognise, or maybe you don't. Jordan Peterson has achieved that rare feat, becoming a global superstar academic. So how did he become so well known? He first came to national prominence in Canada in 2016 in a debate about new laws on gender identity. Bill C-16 made it an offence to refuse to call someone by their chosen gender pronoun. Jordan Peterson argued that this would infringe free speech, while some supporters of the bill said he was advocating prejudice. From there, his YouTube star took off, and he has now over one million subscribers. And his videos, where he talks everything from identity politics, which we've touched on, to the Bible, to Disney movies, have been viewed over 150 million times. Gosh, that's about the same number of viewers we have on this programme. Ha. Last year, he supported ex-Google employee James Damore, who had been fired for suggesting men and women have different interests due to biological differences. And his latest book, 12 Rules for Life has taken him on a global tour promoting his ideas and just this week he sold out the 1,000-seater Emmanuel Centre around the corner here in Westminster. Um, so Jordan, you've done endless interviews, you've been published. Yeah. Hey guys, before we get started, it's your girl Melanie and I came across this, um, I have not watched it yet so I don't even know the topics they're going to get into. You guys know I usually deal in relationships um, and so... <laughs> But what I'm finding is that it is the conversation is is way further than just what's happening in, in modern dating and modern women. It is that is just a um, a um, a symptom of what the root cause is. And I find myself more drawn to the root cause and the root cause that I'm seeing is this grotesque version of feminism that has spread into every part of society especially here in the west so it's from our media um entertainment um just uh regular regular like news shows social media in the workplace uh in the school systems in the universities and colleges just and, and then in also in relationships it is everywhere and these ideologies we have to start getting to the root if we want to really eradicate it so Bear with me with this one. You've been publicizing your book and they've generated plenty of heated debate. And actually sold out the Apollo. It had 5,000 seats. All right, stop boasting. <laughs> um, do you think, though, because of the heat that has been generated, that your views have been misrepresented at times? Oh, definitely. But that's, you know, that's part and parcel of the process. I did take a very um, uh, forceful stance, let's say, against some of the excesses of the radical left-wingers and it's in their best interest to paint me as uh, somehow a figure of the extreme right, because then I don't have to be contended with. But, I mean, it's easy for people's views to be oversimplified in a very large public debate. I mean, in terms of some of the issues, I mean, you say you've been uh, painted as, a, as a, an extreme right winger. Or, no, some or, people have tried yeah. that. Not very successfully, but they've tried it. And you came to prominence um, <laughs> in part over your opposition to this law. That... Y'all, I'm sorry. They be trying Jordan so hard, don't they? Like, it's just, he is, he is the king of the snapback. Like, he knows exactly where they're going. He understands their mind. A lot of us don't want to engage in conversations with people who have opposing views, but that's how you learn. That's how you study your, your enemy, basically. That's a core tenet um, of debate. And I don't know if that's one of the, what is it, the, the laws of power? I don't know if it's one of those laws, but... The more you know, the more you, you, you engage with them, hear their, their, how they think, their reasoning, their rationalities, um, how much they're led by their emotions versus logic, like you can, how they formulate arguments. And this is how you're able to get to the level where he is, um, and as well as being passionate and really have that fundamentally being who you are. So it's just amazing to see that we just talked about yeah. in Canada proposing the use of preferred pronouns for transgender people mm. just for clarity. mandating them yeah right so that that you issue. should do it no but, that you had to do it right you had to do it by right. law but just for clarity do you think a trans woman is a real woman <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated you know I don't know what that means what do you mean a real woman well she I'm asking you in your mind you know it depends what you think a real woman is but do you think a trans woman is a woman no. Why not? Because I think that women 
are capable, generally speaking, of having babies, and they have female genitalia, and they have an XX chromosome, and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. It doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that people should be treated with respect and dignity if they happen not to fit easily into a gender category. That's a different issue. Right. But, but it's a matter of definition, and, and I actually think it's a foolish argument in some sense, because what do you mean by real? Well, I mean, you've just clarified that, though. You, you, you don't think um, that a trans woman... So when she's saying real, she's actually... It, he explained biology. So does she, when she say, says real, is she saying biology? Is she saying that you believe a trans woman is a biological woman? Because she just equated real to what he's saying. She agreed with that's that that she wanted that type of answer not based on how they see themselves how they identify in the world what gender they they feel like they are or f for this reason that reason but we're talking about the science of it and point to him like what is a woman and do you do you think that that is what is behind or explains your opposition to this idea of a law mandating you to use a no. preferred pronoun is because you don't actually believe that that's the truth that a trans woman is a woman and therefore you can't use that pronoun no that's not my argument at really? all really yeah, really. My yeah, argument is that the no, government I know what your shouldn't compel is. voluntary speech. No, but I know what your argument is, and no, you've but made it very really clearly. It. No, but, but behind, that's exactly it. There's but the no motivation behind, behind, behind no motivation it. behind it. But you don't believe I wouldn't the put everything on my li online in my life to take the stance I did unless I had thought that through very deeply. And I've mm -hmm. thought it through very deeply. There aren't hidden motivations that have to do with some arbitrary prejudice against trans people. Okay. It's I want you to notice, because they're talking about the topic, but I'm actually noticing how he's able to, um, it's almost like his style of debate is what I'm really focused on right here. And obviously his points are straight up. Straight up. But what I'm seeing here is that she keeps trying to hammer this point and, and putting words in his mouth, which you see this sort of, um, even in d dynamics with men and women, trying to put, so do you mean this by saying this? And then they just infer what you said. They're not really curious about, is this what you're saying? They're not trying to clarify your statement or get a deeper understanding. It's a gotcha, trying to rope you into a meaning that you did not give or say. But because it's in their head and that's their agenda, because most of these women um, like her are, you know, they, they behave like activists, like they're pushing an agenda. Um, which both of these women, I believe, are feminists. And so they have an agenda to get to a point, and this is where they will mix up your words or imply that this is what you meant. Or it, and they don't really care about understanding. It's just push. It's just making sure that you're wrong and that they're right. The need to be right. Shout out to Kevin Samuels, my friend. We miss you. We need you. Purely, pure and simply this. There's never been a time in English common law history where the government compelled speech and the Canadian government dared to do that. And that was unacceptable. And they masked it with this show of, of compassion for the oppressed. And I don't buy it. Right. But you would, as I think you said, at an individual level, mm -hmm. if somebody Wouldn't asked have. you, if, you know, somebody asked you to use a particular pronoun, you would do mm -hmm. so. Well, I have. You have. Yes. Right. Fine. Yes. Let's talk about feminism. Are you a feminist? Uh, no, not as it's currently defined, certainly not. No, well, in any other definition? Well, I think that anybody who doesn't think that the, the competitive landscape should be opened up for equality of opportunity is not thinking. And so everyone's interests are better served if people have as equal access to opportunity to display their talents and to manifest their talents in the world as possible. So in that sense, certainly. But feminism now, it's as far, and this is why it's so deeply unpopular, a very small minority of women in the UK identify as feminists. And the reason for that is it's primarily become an ideological weapon. And it's an ideology that I don't, I, I detest, actually, the ideology that it's associated with, collectivist ideology. Right. I mean, it... And one of the things uh, that you, this is the thing, one thing he pointed out was that there's very few women who actually identify as feminists. But that's, 
we understand that group. We understand, you know, a lot of them are kooky or crazy or have an agenda. And so people don't think it's as, as big of an issue. Right. And then also it's kind of wrapped in this, uh, this angelic thing about women and pushing women forward and everything we do is for the benefit of women. What they don't tell you is that those Though even though women, a lot of women don't identify as a feminist per se and are actively trying to push an agenda like they're part of a group, the feminist ideals permeate, like I said, in every part of society. What I what I spoke to before this, and again, I have never watched this clip, but you see it in in all of society. And as a result, the because of modern feminism has is has become anti-male so it's not about pro-women it's about anti-male how to destroy men how to turn women into men how to get women to a place where they don't need men where men don't have a place in society they don't have a role in society um and that it everything there it's almost like their agenda is to wipe out men and to delete delete them completely um, except for the few that they approve of who are more feminized versions of, of, or more feminized versions of men. And so I thought it was interesting just to, just to hear that and him talk about it in that way. But, um, but it's just like this, it's, it's like, she's just digging and digging and digging. And it's just, I think she's, she believes she's coming off as clever or quick witted, or she's getting some gotchas, but she's just. Can you imagine being in a personal relationship with a woman like this, the way she's like interrogating him and not really listening? She's not listening at all. She's just glossing past the thing. So again, so she can push her activist agenda. Okay, and that's your view about feminism. Aisha, are you a feminist? Oh, absolutely. I'm a very proud uh, feminist. And when I was um, a special advisor in government, I worked on women and equality issues. And I'm very proud actually of a piece of legislation I got on the statute book with my former boss, Harriet Harman, the Equality Act uh, in 2010, which strengthened our anti-discrimination um, laws. And I fought very hard to get more women into public life, into the Labour Party. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very proud of being a feminist, hence my pink dress. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. Um, obviously reverse. That's pink, uh, purple. I I'm being petty, but, and again, she has to talk about, again, this is an activist. OK, so there's a difference between the everyday woman, I would say, has been indoctrinated with feminist ideals and move and operate and think about men in this world in a very feminized way, in a feminist way. Um, but this this is a woman who's standing on it. She's very proud of it. And what I find with these people who are more of like the academic feminists, their their eyes and ears are not on the ground. They're so focused on pushing this agenda they don't care, they don't see nor do they care of what it is doing in this to say an arena like the dating market. They see men as the problem. They don't really have a solution other than to keep pushing women as the best and angelic and men bad, women good, but things are getting worse. Our boys are falling behind. The uni I mean, there's just so many layers to this, but they keep pushing this thing, but they're not getting better results. Sure, it may on a surface level look like women are getting better results, better paying jobs, more degrees, and all these other things. But across the board, women are more miserable, especially when it comes to their personal life. And they don't understand why, but the only tool that is in the feminist handbook is to keep hammering in on men and blaming men and not taking accountability. To type then absolutely the pink well, um, hmm. you would like men to regain or reclaim their strength physically, mentally, and morally. Is that broadly correct? I would say morally, fundamentally, but I think the other things go along with that. Right, and, and if that but is... it isn't men precisely who I'm who I'm speaking to. It's it's people. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm actually interested in individuals, and I'm interested in their fortification against tragedy. You know, every time I do an interview, the interview is always political. It's always political. Well, the, and clue, the clue is in the title of this program. We are the Daily <laughs> oh, Politics. Oh, no, no, fair enough. No, 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 fair enough, fair enough. And I'm, I'm not casting aspersions <laughs> at this program, but the fundamental news that's important about what I'm doing isn't the political element. And the people who but talk what? to me don't talk politically. They well, say they've watched but, but my part, lectures. But part and of that it they're... is, sorry, is that I think for a lot of people... Okay, I'm going to interrupt them interrupting him. 
again, the, the main woman was interrupting him, which she's done several times. And now this woman, they're ganging up on him. So again, when they don't have, they don't like what you say, these, these type of women will just talk over you, push past your point and not let you fully get out what you're saying because they don't like something and immediately they need to fix it. They need to address it. And they don't care if they have to be rude. They don't care if it's not good etiquette. They don't, they don't care about that because, because again, they are activists and anything that goes against their narrative, they don't even want others to hear an opposing side. They don't even, they want you to close your ears and only listen to what they have to say. Well, the kind of personal does become the, 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 the political. Or well, the political becomes the personal. Yeah, and I think in terms of the... Yeah, the, but the, in the, this situation, a lot of people are wrong because primarily what's happening is people are watching my lectures and as a consequence, their lives are improving dramatically. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. I'm sure people are like, have had a huge conversion after it's and they're much conversion. happier once they've been... It's not a been. conversion. But it's, uh, what, it's what I would like... Again, he didn't interrupt her he was getting back to the point that he was trying to make and then he talks about the then he gives his evidence of this and instead of her d diving into that she what did she do oh i'm sure yeah yeah it's this condescending oh i'm sure she wants to gloss that they, they, they've been uh uh was it converted or transformed she uses these very bombastic words to to demonstrate just how sarcastic she is actually being while feigning being polite and, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's straight back to her point. She didn't even hear what he has to say and she's not curious. They don't care about what the results, they just have an agenda to push. To do is, is kind of almost, I think at the moment, the discussion about feminism is very d d divisive and it, sometimes it can sort of be like, okay, men have to lose and women have to gain. Actually, mm -hmm. everybody has a lot to gain mm. by greater equality. Now, whether you get the equality of outcome that you want, I think only time will tell. But certainly, equality of opportunity is is very important. And actually, well, we a lot and a lot of men would would benefit from that. So I think a lot of it, men men are having a lot of crises at the moment in terms of mental, mental health, mm. suicide issues, and um, their own sense of identity. Because I think some of the stereotypes put on men are quite limiting for them as well. I think they make men quite unhappy as well. The so devil's in the details with regards to equality because I'm a, an advocate of equality of opportunity. But and I outcomes. Think the idea, outcomes. That's an appalling doctrine. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, because well, you have to what? produce an unbelievably potent bureauc bureaucracy to make the ever greater and ever finer distinctions that are necessary to enforce equality of outcome. How many group differences are you going to equalize across? Is it just gender and sex? How many genders? No, so gender and ethnicity? How many genders? I think How many what, ethnicities? What are, How many races? Uh, we'll let Aisha answer. I think what, what people are trying to do with this, and certainly as somebody who you know, has looked to do, sought to sort of do this myself, I think you set yourself ambitions for, for what you would like to see, and then you try and remove as many of the, the structural barriers and mm. obstacles. So you try and create that you know, fair crack of the whip mm -hmm. and that equality of opportunity to see where you get to with the outcomes. That, that's now, fine. we are in very early stages. It's only 100 years since you know, women got the vote mm. in this country. You know, we have had a long established patriarchal society and set up for, for a long time in the world in this country. So I think- Let me just say this. Um, <laughs> women, <laughs> They want, they, okay, let's take away the word equality because they don't want equality, okay? They want a guarantee that women are succeeding over men, that women are the successful ones in society in all layers, uh, and even as far as being the head of the household. This is why they push so many single women to have children out of wedlock and to not value the father, court systems wanting to, you know, you know, all the, the whole thing. And so when they talk about, and then she's, <laughs> She's getting into here discussing actually that you need to have equal, uh, um, equal outcomes. And how can you guarantee that this is how delusional and non-logical this her mind is in this ideology? You can give people the same opportunity, but you can never guarantee equal outcomes. There's so many factors in which he talked about. And so one of the things that they do is continue to push their agenda through, again, all facets of society, um, the starting with the government. The government really is, is the head of all of this. 
And so they, they have to keep coming up with laws and bills and reinforcing socially these agendas and a, and punishments through, through the government punishments, socially, so punishments, economically getting canceled. If you go against what they have to say, they don't want discussion. You see how this one discussion, you can put this into social media, the dating world, anything you the court system. And this is, this is how men are treated across the board, even though they're being logical, even though what they're saying is sound, even though what this woman is saying is of guaranteeing uh, equality of outcome is absolutely ridiculous. It's still, there will be women, there will be people and some men who will walk away thinking she owned him. I know it's, it's hard and think she's right. We have a long way to go to see where it plays out. There is no country in the world where, you know, we really do have gender equality um, properly yet in terms of dis real decision making and, and real Some of the power. Scandinavian Sorry, one point I want to say is that they want, women want the equality, but they don't want the responsibility that comes with it. You know, when you talked about the responsibilities that men have and in, in, in terms of why they were able to vote, Yes, there are some disparities, but you have to understand men bore the brunt of responsibility of providing and protecting for women and children. And so they were the ones making the decisions. Women, they were the ones getting drafted, having to go to war, getting killed, all of that. So women did not have equal responsibility. And so when, when she talks about this equality, it has to be responsibility. And this is the same thing I would say for today. If women really want equality, why aren't they fighting to work in the coal mines in the and be an oil liner, work on the pipelines, work you know in a nuclear uh, facility? Why aren't they the ones down in the sewers and building and doing construction? Like if you want equality, it can't just be these glamorous power positions that make you feel good. You if if it's true equality there should be a requirement of the government that like 50% of those jobs need to be by women. Like, where are we going to see that? Never, of course. Yeah. countries, maybe? But I, they're still not quite there. And I think you've spoken a lot about this. Scandinavia, there's still a way to go in Scandinavia. Things are not perfect well, in I Scandinavia haven't, I haven't at all. Well, I spoken about that specifically. I've spoken about You spoke the, about the right stuff yesterday. I, you talked about the Scandinavia. Well, I've spoken about the fact that, you see, one of the things that's happened in the analysis of the differences between men and women is that the social constructionist claim is that mm. the differences are socially constructed, mm. right? Is that it's a consequence of environment that men and women differ. But what the scientific literature indicates is that as cultures become more egalitarian, like they have in Scandinavia, the differences between men and women actually increase rather than decreasing, which is a direct repost to the social constructionist view. So they just deny all that. The biggest differences in the world in interest and temperament are between Scandinavian men and women. It's exactly the opposite of what everyone well, predicted. Can I just pick up on one thing you said a little earlier in the interview, yeah. which you said it's the moral guidance that you are, are, are focused on. You think that yeah. is particularly important. How do you square that with the behavior of perhaps arguably, you know, a prominent alpha male president of the United States, Donald Trump? Um, when his behavior, I mean, he is accused of having an affair with a porn star when his wife was pregnant. Did she jump? She did not hear anything. Not a word that he said. Said, and she wanted to use this as an opportunity to to talk about Trump. I honestly feel sorry for you guys. I feel. I don't feel sorry. Like I, I, I do. I do. I pity you when you because this is who you're dealing with. I'm sorry. I have to admit it. Like, I would lose my mind. And like, imagine like you're. Dating women, this is like their mindset. This is what they believe. Oh. Your workplace. Oh. And how does that fit with morally reclaiming? Um, well, you know, I would the say that was rather clearly immoral. Right. Yeah, but and you not, would still, not to be a target for emulation. But you still would have voted pursue. for him over well, Hillary Clinton fair, those, as, as fair, an though, identity politics. It, the, I mean, it's just... What? She wants to compare the Clintons to Trump. Do we really need to? Wow. So again, Hillary Clinton is a woman, so she's deity. She's angelic. She's done nothing wrong, her and her family. 
but man bad because and I thought, why are they shaming, why, why are, you know, her body, her choice, why are they shaming um, his body, his choice for him having an affair? Why are they shaming a woman for being a peace star? Is, shouldn't they, they, don't they embrace that a woman can be able to do that? They shouldn't be judged. And that shouldn't even be brought up in the language, right? That shouldn't even be shaming for that because really anything goes when it comes to these feminists and whatever you feel like doing, no one should have any judgments about it. No one should have any qualms about it. You should, it, 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 there should be no labels for anything. But there she is doing it. Well, how None do of that you was really on the it? table. And I said I might have voted for him on a whim. That's but all. But you also said, say you started so. out feeling quite close to Hillary Clinton. Can I just come yeah, on, on the Very order? quickly, because we've got to move on. In a way, I don't, really, I don't care what Trump does in terms of his private life. But sure. what I don't have is him stopping or potentially stopping other women having agency over their reproductive rights and lots of men taking those decisions, It's for all example. about where the moral outrage lies and what's yeah. more morally outrageous um, in, in people's eyes. Is it his behaviour or the identity politics for you on the... Anyway, we'll have to discuss this... I, I'm just baffled how they jump from topic to topic, never heard what he had to say, and just, you see, it was all to lead to those, the last two things, talking about Trump, and I don't know if I can say the word on here, you know what, what she just said. So, what? So this is why the conversations go nowhere. Because there's an end agenda. It's not with an open mind. It's not to learn. It's not to listen. It's not to grow. Even though women always tell me I'm doing, I'm growing and I'm developing. These men are behind me. No, in reality, men have weighed the logic of these things. They are invested in these types of conversations and not just watching the Real Housewives and and, rant and being on TikTok with randomness, just being entertained. And so when you. Men are actually very emotionally intelligent, but they include their logic and they, they are facing the brunt of the negative, the negative outcomes that are happening because of ideologies like this. So they have to be invested. Women get all the benefits from this seemingly on the surface, seemingly on the surface, but it's a catch 22 because we are destroying ourselves with this because we are destroying men with this and no society can function where where one where men are no longer seen as useful or not part of society it just it just will not stand no no society in history has ever stood like that but somehow we think we know better today and can change it but guys let me know what you think this is a long one hopefully if you're still here make sure you subscribe and i want to hear what your thoughts are on this again this is a little different than what i usually do but hopefully you like it all right Bye.